So a lot of people are going to think this is a hate hate video. It's not a hate video. It's just an objective, critical look um, at a pattern that I have noticed about Jimmy Dore that has just now uh, added up. I did not recognize this pattern until now. And I'll tell you uh, where the dots started to line up here. So you guys remember the Andrew Gillum race in which he faced off against Ron DeSantis running for governorship uh, in the gubernatorial election in Florida. It is heavily debated amongst the progressive community and just the left altogether as to, you know, whether or not it was a good move or the reason why he lost was because he started to uh, campaign with corporate Democrats like Hillary Clinton, Demon Wasserman Schultz, and um, all the other insane corporate Democrats like Cory Booker. Now, here's something really interesting, and this is where the dots started to add up here. You guys are going to see this theory that Jimmy Dore is going to have about why uh why he's going to explain why he believes that Hillary Clinton, Cory Booker and all the other corporate democrats decided to campaign with him. Can't get over this and now Hillary Clinton's going to campaign with Gillum mm -hmm. in Florida. Now who does that help? That helps Hillary Clinton. That doesn't ha help Andrew Gillum. Hillary Clinton lost Florida to Trump. You want to know who's running for office and who has plans for 2020? Look at who's helping Andrew Gillum. And look at who's putting pressure on Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. You will know, you and obviously the poll, the fake poll that they put up on CNN. But look at who's coming behind, because that's a purple. It's a purple state. I I think that it it's actually they're look. So Andrew Gillum, uh, they're putting the screws to him. This mm -hmm. is how they they squeeze the progressives. And then they make they say you got to go campaign with Hillary Clinton. This is <laughs> this helps Hillary Clinton. This yeah, this is it I doesn't help Gillum. I swear sure. to God. So here's my theory. Now this might sound crazy, but here it is. Yeah, we talked about this. So you know how Tim Canova got screwed over in the primary. He 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 might have won it, maybe probably no, won, he definitely won, won the primary cheated. against Debbie Wasserman Schultz. And then when he wanted the ballots recounted, they destroyed them. Absolutely. He went to a judge. Judge said, but then he found out even after the judge agreed with him. Uh, that that it was illegal. He thought that the head of elections would do something. Turns out the head of elections didn't do anything uh, to the to the people who destroyed the ballots. And so mm -hmm. what that means is that they're go they're going to cheat him again, and there'll be no repercussions because the people who run the elections have the same donors as Debbie Wasserman Schultz, mm -hmm. as the Republican opponents, as the Republican governor, as the re so they all have the same donors. So they want to screw Tim Canova. They they're together, so they don't care if Debbie Wasserman Schultz cheated. Tim Canova, they want Debbie Wasserman Schultz, they're the donors. Do you get that? So mm -hmm. what I think is happening here is that the Democratic Party has the same donors. They don't want Andrew Gillum to even win. I think Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Hillary Clinton want to screw him as the progressive and say, look, the progressive can't win. I, why else would they be doing this to him? Why else would they want make Andrew Gillum campaign with her? Look how unpopular she is. Her unfavorable, it's, it's unchanged from last November, a record low, 36%. This is from, that's from October 1st. That's Gallup News. Hillary Clinton's favorability in the U.S. adults is unchanged from last November, record low, 36 So to me, this is the Democratic Party trying to undermine, just like he said before, they were undermining Bernie's. I think they're undermining uh, Andrew Gillum's campaign, and this is how they're doing it. They're making him campaign with the most unpopular person <laughs> in the history of uh, unpopularity, who lost to Donald Trump, and then making him uh, making him uh, be seen with these people. That's also going to screw him. Look how unpopular she is with her own people. So that's my theory. <laughs> that's how the Democratic Party is undermining a progressive candidate like Andrew Gillum. I actually don't think that's in a crazy theory at all. I mean, it's almost like what what they did right after the election with Bernie Sanders when they realized that he was still ridiculously popular. <laughs> so what do you do? You take really controversial issues, especially issues that Bernie is kind of, I won't say iffy on, but he's kind of, he, he takes the intelligence community's opinion because that's what older style politicians have always done. And so they throw him in front of a camera and that's the only time he's allowed to talk. And then they then they have like, what he'll say something and they'll say uh, the Cory Booker of the world. Even Bernie Sanders says this. You know, <laughs> yeah. Even Bernie Sanders. <laughs> so you're seeing you're seeing that pattern kind of take place and, and come into fruition with Andrew Gillum. Uh, and I think that you're right. I think that they feel like they have to have a total annihilation uh, in the midterms to a degree in order to successfully win back the White House in 2020. But I also believe, like what you said, that it's for Hillary. I think that Hillary's going to run, and I think the goal is that Hillary doesn't even necessarily have to win. 
they she can take the delegates that she does win, hand them off to Ka- Kamala Harris or Cory Booker, or Cory Booker and Kamala Harris can then take their delegates very much so like uh, 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 Martin O'Malley did. Martin O'Malley took his delegates and made a backroom deal with Hillary at the convention. She got all his delegates that he won. Now imagine multiplying that by 50 between Kamala and Cory Booker, that's that's disaster for whatever progressive wants to win in the Democratic Party in 20. Yeah, so there really is no other way to put it than uh, just the simple fact that Jimmy Dore has a fetish for conspiracy theories. And I don't know why that is. It's really weird. But this one is a really dumb one that I really don't understand even in the slightest. So Jimmy's theory here is that the reason for... Uh, Demon Washerman Schultz and Hillary Clinton and Cory Booker campaigning with uh, with Andrew Gillum is not because they believe that Andrew Gillum will win with their aid and with their help, but rather that those people want, uh, you know, D- Demon Washerman Schultz and Hillary Clinton and all the other people, they all want uh, Andrew Gillum to lose because then it'll make an overarching point about how progressivism will not function or it will not succeed in being elected. That is one of the craziest things I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, And it just totally, it's this really weird, like 12 dimension chess where it's like, oh yeah, you know, uh, we're not going to campaign with this guy because we think that we're going to aid him to win, but rather we're going to go out of our way to campaign with this person. We're going to have someone who's not, who, you know, makes rare appearances in the public spotlight um, come out of essentially the woodwork in a sense and to uh, endorse and campaign with Andrew Gillum, not because, you know, they believe that they're going to win, but rather because they think that that'll make his election lose. That's what they believe and that they're doing it for the purpose of uh, basically dismantling progressivism and trying to spite progressives in elections. Um, that's pretty crazy. I don't even really know where to begin with that. I think the biggest issue with this is, is the idea that they're thinking it through that much is hilariously dumb. Um, and also these people and like his, he doesn't have any evidence for it except for the evidence being that, The polling data shows that Hillary Clinton and the other people are extremely unpopular. So Jimmy brings up the uh, the statistic of how she (laughs) she's so unpopular that her popular uh, her popularity number is still at 36 percent. Sorry, her approval number is at 36 percent. So that's his only evidence for it. He doesn't have any evidence for it. That's not evidence, by the way, because this totally uh, reroutes. And takes a detour from the fact that these corporate Democrats, people like Hillary Clinton and Cory Booker and, you know, DWS, they all genuinely believe that they are, they're very self-entitled. They believe that they will win. Often they believe they're deserving of things, of, of office. And so this idea that Hillary Clinton and all of them decided to do this to spite progressives rather than believing that they could legitimately change the outcome of the election and help Gillum win is hilarious because the corporate Democrats, especially Hillary Clinton we're talking about here and DWS we're talking about here, they are very, very self-entitled. They always have, um, you know, they always are, I don't even know, like given like just super super self-entitled, very cocky, believe that they they are actually the, some kind of deities of some sort. And so the reason why they're doing that, despite their unpopularity, is due to their uh, lack of logic and mostly due to the fact that they are extremely cocky and very, very um, just self-entitled. So no, that didn't happen. And you don't even actually have any evidence for that. You just bring up that Hillary is unpopular, but Hillary being unpopular doesn't mean that she doesn't believe that she can make a change. As we saw in 2016, despite any numbers, no numbers will change her mind of her believing that she can make change and that she's good. That's why she keeps on coming out of the woodwork. So this conspiracy theory is some legitimate 12 dimensional chess that's insane. And again, the burden of proof lies upon him to actually prove it. And there, there is no proof whatsoever. And then the theory that is uh, presented is that 
you know, Hillary wanted them to lose as many uh, spots in the midterms so that then when 2020 comes around, they can take back the White House because then she'll run and then she'll take her delegates and make a backroom deal on the convention with these corporate Democrats. Like, how much of a lunatic do you have to be to believe this kind of stuff? Are you kidding me? Like, you you think that they have all of that planned out right now? You think that? That's insane. You're crazy. That's not even, that's not even close to the truth. You're just making stuff up because you're insane. And the thing about Jimmy is, is this is where the dots connected. So apparently this guy thinks that he's like, he thought he was a doctor of some sort or something like that. I don't know what was wrong with this guy. <laughs> so I'm, we all saw Hillary Clinton uh, almost pass out when she was going into the van. And they first said she was overheated. And then they said uh, she was fine. And they said, oh, no, she got pneumonia. And then they said she was fine. And they said, no, she's going to cancel her California trip. So there's been a lot of conflicting uh, stories. So they lied about it. And I don't know if you saw the video. We There's a video on this channel of her falling. She didn't fall like you would fall if you were fainting. She fell like you would fall if you were having a drunk. Like, like. <laughs> Sorry, dude. That's what I saw when I saw it. I saw what was wrong. Like, if you faint, usually your head goes, but mm -hmm. her head didn't go. She was stiff. It was looked like a neurological thing, like her, like they have a, she had a spasm or a thing. Cause like she, she was like this. So she was like jerky, like someone with. Are you a doctor? I am not a doctor, <laughs> but that's not how people faint. And you know why I'm allowed to, um, I give myself permission to uh, speculate because they lied. So once they lie about it, now we all get to speculate. Wow. She's anyway, let's hear. What, what's your theory? What do you think he did? What do you I think, think she did? I think she has Parkinson's because she has a certain type of pneumonia that isn't because they were like, well, if she had pneumonia on Friday, she was out there meeting people and she was around kids. Why are you letting her infect people? And they go, no, no, it's a certain kind of pneumonia called. Is it called aspiration? I think it's called aspiration pneumonia, which you only get. That's not bacterial. You only get that from Parkinson's. So that's the fact that but number wait. one killed. Okay, it's it didn't almost catch her. It did catch it her. It caught her mm -hmm. from couple, it, caught, it totally caught her. And we also saw the metal thing fall out of her pants, which I showed on another video that no one's bringing up, by the way. What's a, what, what? There was a metal, so people are saying that because if she has Parkinson's, that you lose bladder control, mm -hmm. that she's wearing a catheter, and they've showed other pictures of it. You could see it through her pants. That's what they claim. Well, you don't know what that is, so I never brought it up. But then during this, I'll show you the video. Yeah, yeah. When she falls, a piece of metal comes out of her pants and hits the concrete. And you can hear it and you can see it. Yeah, but catheters aren't... But it's strapped to her knee. They would, they, the, the way the drawings I've seen, that they can, the, to strap it to your knee is where they, that they, are, they use a metal clamp or whatever. So here... But I didn't even know this until... Until... I don't remember how long ago it was, but it wasn't that long ago. Um, but he actually had made a video titled is the media failing to report hillary's parkinson's in which he actually speculates and he he if you watch the video he literally tries to give a breakdown as if he's a doctor saying you know well you know the way that she fell down was uh you know clearly that she has parkinson's and there were so there were a few like sane people in the comments saying that it wasn't and giving like an actual breakdown of it but dude this dude legitimately put on a fake doctor's coat, uh, coat, not literally, metaphorically speaking. And he tried giving a breakdown and giving an argumentation as to why he speculated that she had Parkinson's. Wow, that is insane. That's crazy. He legitimately made up a conspiracy that and totally just short, like straight up tried backing it up with a bunch of like medical stuff that he doesn't know. He's not a doctor. Um, and it doesn't end there. You guys remember the whole Seth Rich debacle? Uh, well, apparently he had made a video on it. Quite a lengthy one, by the way. It was quite a lengthy video, uh, where he, the entire, if you watch the video, <laughs> if you watch the video in the beginning, like he starts saying these things and he gives off these exuberant, uh, exuberant, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but like he'll, when he says something, he, he looks right at the camera. And this, this is part of Jimmy's style of the way he speaks. He takes long pauses in between what he says. But 
he like he'll say something and then he'll look at the camera like real close up like put his eyes to the camera and and insinuating that this is some kind of like wow like look at this man there's crazy stuff and then i guess like 18 minutes into like the 25 minute video he goes well you know we reserve judgment until <laughs> evidence comes out and so that's classic classic plausible deniability at work where you you say this crazy stuff and then you throw in this like mini caveat at the end and then you go, oh, you know, well, no, 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 you're misrepresenting me. You know, you're lying. It's like this guy has a weird fetish for these theories, man. I don't know what is up with Jimmy and this stuff, but the guy cannot get enough of it. And it's pure insanity that, th that this is actually going on. And so I honestly, <laughs> honestly don't even know what to say about this, but the dots definitely connected as soon as. As soon as I first heard this Gillum, this Gillum theory that he had, I realized that this guy is absolutely attached to these weird uh, theories where it's like, you know, Hillary wants a bunch of midterm spots to be lost so that they can get the White House. And then she can take the delegates and give it to Kamala and give it to Cory Booker. And oh, this it's like, dude, are you serious? You think they've thought that deep right now? Are you crazy? And this uh, it's just getting out of hand, man. Like. The the one that really put put me over, I was like, holy smokes, was the was the Parkinson's one. That was this guy literally. I watched it. He gave a breakdown as if he's an actual doctor. That was the worst one I've ever seen in my entire life, um, and obviously ended up being wrong. But I just don't get why he does this. I mean, he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to. I don't even know why this is happening, but. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, you got to be careful with this guy, man. He's going to just continue to make these weird theories out of nowhere and just say them. And I guess now we know why Bernie Sanders doesn't want to go on this guy's show.